Hello Aviators, Sky here, and on today's journey we will visit one of the most iconic places for the aviation industry and get acquainted with several epic aircraft at once. The Aviators organized a special tour for the enthusiasts and I managed to join them in order to shoot something beautiful for you. We are going to the glorious city of Zhukovsky, to the Gromov Flight Research Institute, the main Soviet and Russian aviation test site, to the flight center of the Yak Design Bureau, where Yakovlev's past, present and future brain children await us. We were lucky with the weather. On that day there was a severe cold. I will not describe a huge airfield that was blown through in frosty weather. Although again, we are in fact at a restricted research facility in Russia, so everything is authentic. It's time to see what kind of vehicles are waiting for us. The first to meet is a pair of glorious civilian veterans of Yakovlev, the Yak-40 and Yak-42 regional airliners. A special thrill of meeting old planes when they are not half-forgotten machines in the suburbs, but quite vigorous birds. The big brother, Yak-42D, is not an ordinary airliner at all, but a flying lab of Ross Hydromat used to study the atmosphere. The Yak-40 is not that exotic, but it is not quite ordinary either. The aircraft has a luxury cabin like a business jet and used to be the personal aircraft of its creator. You can say the Yakovlev of Yakovlev. I couldn't get in sight right away, it was time to move on to the next stage of the journey. To say that the research institute is an aviation treasury is to say nothing. What I saw just driving along the road would be enough for a hundred videos, but today we are not talking about those machines. We drive to the western end of the airstrip, the place that is usually closed to the public at the Moscow Air Show. We didn't have to wait for our main hero. On the horizon over the snow-covered airfield appeared perhaps the most interesting today's character and the main brainchild of the modern Russian aviation industry, the MC-21 airliner. I'll say right away that I will not talk about the MC-21 in this story. For this we need a separate movie about this machine. Its potential in competition with the Boeing 737 and Airbus A320 families or answering the question why it is on par with other Yakovlev planes and what is the Yak-242. For now we will just take a walk and look at this particular plane which parks so beautifully in front of us. So. The MC-21-300, tail number 73053. This is the second flight prototype of the airliner, so it can be considered an early one. Now there are already as many as 7 prototypes, including those that are undergoing static tests. The aircraft was assembled at the Irkutsk aircraft plant in 2018 and since then has been driven in full, both in tests and at air shows. Yes, at the MAX 2019 air show, it was this plane that was cutting circles over the crowds of fans, managing to do tricks in the sky unusual for a commercial airliner. The airliner is powered by a pair of Pratt Whitney 1400G turbofan engines, a modification made for the MC-21. They have relatives. The 1100G are installed in the Airbus A320neo family airliners. We have already seen the 1500G under the wings of the Airbus A220, the former Bombardier C-Series, the 1700 and 1900G are hung under the wings of the second generation Embraer E-Jet airliners and the junior 1200G should be lifting into the sky the long-awaited Japanese Mitsubishi MRJ, the current space jet. Someone will probably ask. Why is there a Pratt Whitney in front of us and not the brainchild of Russian engine engineers, the PD-14? The prototype MC-21-310, which flies with the PD-14, is now busy, confirming performance that should not be inferior to Pratt. In fact, this is to put it mildly an ambitious task, given that the PD-14 is the first completely new large jet engine in Russia in decades and its counterpart at the moment can be considered one of the best in the class, competing maybe only with the CFM Leap. Let's take a little walk around. 
The MC-21 wing, a great pride of aviators, is made with a wide use of carbon fiber composites, which allows to reduce weight, improve aerodynamic performance and make it more stylish, even without wingtips. Mechanization is in place, ailerons, flaps, spoilers and slats. We do not see them in operation because the plane does not move, but I hope soon everyone will have the opportunity to shoot all this from the window during a flight. And yes, there is no need to be surprised at these strange structures on the leading edges. Let me remind you that our board is a tester with a job that is unusual for serial machines. All other attributes of a modern airliner are also in place, looking at it in general, more or less a familiar picture. Considering how cold it is in the yard, the warm exhaust from the air conditioning system became my best friend. Time to go inside. Since our plane is a flight prototype, and an early one, there is of course no cabin here. The beauty is hiding in another plane. Here we have a large empty space, partially occupied by testing equipment and posts for test operators. An interesting experience. This is how you can roughly estimate what the planes look like before customization, the installation of cabins and other attributes of passenger comfort, a large corridor with windows. Finally, the most interesting place for any aviation geek, especially since we are talking about a completely new model, the workplace of test pilots, the cockpit. There is a complete set of everything that a modern, medium-range airliner should have, so you shouldn't be surprised that everything looks about the same as that of its relatives in terms of class. Fully equipped, large displays, interfaces with pedestal cursors, side sticks. Yes, yes, not yokes. In fact, for all the commonness, this cockpit has many interesting features. For example, the side sticks are synchronized with each other. You may notice that everything here is a bit shabby, but again, this is a prototype, and what the engineers managed to mess up with all the equipment in several years of work, we can only guess. Glazing can be taken as the cherry on the cake. It could be considered quite normal for new wide-body airliners, such as the Boeing 787 and Airbus A350, but for a much smaller single-aisle plane, it is simply huge. Well, photos and videos from the pilots from this observation deck will be even more colorful. While I was crawling around the cockpit with a camera and bombarding the staff with questions, next to the MC-21 parked its ancestor, the already familiar Yak-42. Now it will not hide from us. The plane of Ross Hydromet cannot be called ordinary at all. If in general views it seems to be just a Yak-42, upon close acquaintance a lot of special details and instruments that are used in studying the atmosphere in flight become noticeable, making it clear why its index is not 42D but 42LL, Litaishe Laboratoria, a flying laboratory. The three D36 engines in the tail look great. Their bypass ratio is quite decent, more than 5, so we can see the light coming through the second circuit from behind the fan. The entrance to the plane, like that of the Yak-40, is in the tail, through a descending air stair. Inside, there are even more oddities. This is not a passenger, but a science research plane, and an ordinary cabin has been replaced by a lab, jam-packed with equipment. The cockpit is largely the same as that of the Model 42 aircraft, albeit with some modern additions. Progress of course is especially noticeable in contrast when you can run around like this and compare the dashboards of two airliners of different generations. Yes, between them there is almost half a century, but the moans that aviation is not developing I would consider slightly exaggerated. Yakovlev's personal Yak-40 neatly parked next to our Yak-42. It's time to look at what tricks the creators of the plane's cabin went to for the general designer. The tricks were very modest, there is no revealing story about big money to be told here. Everything is tasteful but simple. Two pairs of seats in the center, a kitchen in the front, and several seats in rows in the tail. The cockpit is also quite standard, with a set of modern instruments for relevance. It is still not a museum exhibit, but quite a working aircraft. The show continues and the number of the yaks grows. A couple of not so large but no less curious machines arrived at the field. 
Next to the Yak-40, a combat training jet Yak-130 flashed in bright red. A resident of the research institute, a test plane and a big fan of demonstration flights at air shows. I don't know if it's the design of the plane, with all these outlines and huge luxurious glazing, or if the colors are so captivating, but I couldn't let go of the feeling that this was a mad winged sports car. If Ferrari were making an airplane, it would be the Yak-130. Although... Next to it, as the final link, arrives the piston Yak-152, which in turn should replace the old models and become the first step for young pilots on the way to something big, fast and sometimes wild. There is still not enough of them, but let's hope there will be many soon. There is a need, not everyone should be immediately thrown into a jet. I should make separate videos about them, just as they begin to fill the sky. Five planes in one frame, the smallest of which weighs less than one and a half tons, and the largest one goes over 79. A rare sight indeed. It is also rare to see the testers of all this beauty. People who need no introduction in the Russian aviation environment briefly came to visit. Test pilots Alek Kananenko and Roman Taskaev, who lifted the MC-21 on its maiden flight in 2017, among other things. Although back then, they were driving the large bird, and now they themselves are driven near this birds by a crowd of photographers. By that time, the weather began to cosplay the movie The Day After Tomorrow, and it was time to take our birds to their nests. But before that, a fun photo with the employees of the Yakovlev Research Institute who had to toil with us all day. The process of evacuating the plane from the field was also a lot of fun, just like at a fashion show. Well, on this positive note, we can end our adventure today. I think the adventure turned out to be interesting and beautiful. Like and subscribe to the channel, fans of everything flying, fast flights on glorious veterans and advanced beginners, and soft landings to you.